Uh, one million more primary school children in London will be staying at home next week. The Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, has made a last-minute U-turn and decided that all London primary schools will now be closed. They had been going to stay open in nine boroughs and in the City of London. What should happen now in the rest of England? In Wales, pupils will learn online until the 11th of January, and in Scotland, classes won't resume until the middle of the month. The return in Northern Ireland has been delayed by a week, possibly more. Dr Mary Boosted is Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union and she joins us. Uh, Dr Boosted, good morning. Uh, immense disruption caused uh, to your members in these schools uh, after this uh, last-minute U-turn and, of course, to the education and the lives of the children and families affected. Yes, it's, it's no way to run an education system and it's no way for the government to behave. Um, what's really perplexing about this last-minute U-turn is not the U-turn, which was entirely necessary, but the fact that the decision was ever made that uh, nine London boroughs and the City of London would not be part of the, um, um, the closure of primary schools in when, when infection rates were so high. And what is really perplexing is that the government appeared to be unable to read um, the figures for infections in those boroughs and was and was closing schools in some boroughs with lower infection rates than the boroughs it was saying had to keep open. It is inexplicable. Well, what should happen now in other Tier 4 areas? We wrote to the government before Christmas and we said that um, all primary schools and all secondary schools should remain closed for the first two weeks of January in order to suppress viral levels uh, in schools. Uh, we're at a really, really dangerous and critical situation. We, we know now that this variant is up to 70% more infective than the uh, original strain of COVID. We know that it affects children and young people. They think it affects children and young people more, not in that they're likely to get more ill, but they're likely to spread it more. And we know that this children the, are the most infective spreaders into the community. So the, we're at a really critical and dangerous there's no, um, there's, point. There's no definitive evidence that it's more infectious in children, is there? Dr Susan Hopkins, Public Health England, saying there's not yet any evidence that the new strain is more transmissible. Mm -hmm. uh, and also from the COVID-19 genomics uh, group saying that th there's not definitive evidence of that. No, no, the questions are being asked, but Imperial College modelling uh, suggests that it, it might be more infectious. And we know it's more infectious anyhow. Even if it's not more infectious in children, mm. we know that uh, the virus is up to 70% more infectious and the thing that we do uniquely with children is put them all together in secondary schools where we know children really can transmit in year group bubbles of up to 240 pupils with no social distancing. So it's not difficult to see why secondary school pupils are the highest age group for COVID the, infection the, and primary schools are the second highest infection. The reason perhaps that ministers haven't made these decisions up until now is that they, they view and they've always viewed closing schools as an absolute last resort because of disruption it causes not not just to the education of the children involved but also workers families do you understand that argument of course i do uh, it's very very disruptive and no one wants to close schools i mean teachers and leaders and support staff don't want to close schools they want to keep schools open so they can educate and look after children and young people the issue is if you allow the viral levels to get so high and if you create the conditions where schools are not safe enough and where the uh, virus can be transmitted between pupils and then transmitted onto communities, in the end, all you can do is close schools. And if you allow the conditions to get so bad, in the end, you'll be closing schools for longer. What the government should be doing is what the governments in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland are doing. You don't get this chaos in the other area, uh, the other countries of the uh, mm. uh, United Kingdom. You get is it? And does the government really believe that somehow COVID in England is different than the other countries of the UK? I I, I find the government's recklessness in this regard, both with. Uh, education professionals health but also with community health and um, the questions increasingly around children's yeah. health inexplicable thank you very much dr mary Bowsted from the national education union